We're really excited about this particular study because I think it's a perfect example of how you can go from very hardcore basic research, studying how stem cells build the brain during development, to actually by serendipity finding a potential therapeutic outcome. Now the particular paper that's just being published in Cell Stem Cell is based upon a previous study that we published about two years ago. And in that particular study, my postdoctoral fellow, Jing Wong, who's also the first author on this paper, defined a pathway that was important to tell neural precursors in the developing embryonic cortex to differentiate into neurons and glial cells. Now that pathway included two proteins, a type of protein kinase called atypical protein kinase C, which activated a transcriptional regulator called CVP. So at the time we were doing that work, we were really just interested in very fundamental mechanisms of neural development. But our collaborator and colleague at Johns Hopkins, Fred Wandesford, and his postdoctoral fellow Ling Hay, at the time we were doing that work, published a paper in Cell saying that in fact this same atypical PKC CBP pathway was activated in liver cells by a very commonly used drug called metformin. Well, while that study was very focused on mechanisms of drug treatment of diabetes, Jing and I put two and two together and said, ah, metformin activates this pathway in liver cells, maybe it also activates it in neural precursors, and in doing so enhances their differentiation. Now, in order to understand the next step, you have to understand that in the stem cell field right now, there's tremendous excitement around the idea that many of our tissues, including our brains, have endogenous stem cells, and that maybe one way we can promote recovery or repair after injury is by recruiting those endogenous stem cells pharmacologically to do what we like. So Jing and I said, well, metformin would seem to provide a perfect candidate drug for that kind of thing if it could indeed promote differentiation of neural stem cells. So the first part of the paper describes the work we did during development, and the bottom line of that work is what we showed is that metformin application to developing rodent neural stem cells in a dish causes them to differentiate into neurons. Well, that's a great start, but it's a long way from something therapeutic. The thing that you would need to show if you really were serious about going to humans is that it did the same thing in human neural stem cells. And in order to do that, we collaborated with our colleague Gordon Keller and Dennis Gallagher, another postdoctoral fellow in the lab, went and developed ways of making human neural stem cells from pluripotent human stem cells. And he put metformin on those and showed that just as we saw in rodents, that metformin caused them to make more neurons. So the third thing that you have to do, in addition to these two steps we've already taken, would be to show that it actually worked in vivo. So in order to do that, we went back to mice, adult mice now, we gave them metformin daily and showed that quite remarkably, at least to us, that in fact simply giving metformin was sufficient to enhance the amount of new neurons they made in a part of the brain that's important for learning and memory called the hippocampus. Well, at that point, we turned to our collaborator, Paul Franklin, who's an expert on neural stem cells and mouse behavior, and said, is there any way we can test whether this is a functional enhancement? And basically, we collaborated with Paul to look at a particular learning and memory task called the water maze. And what we were able to show is that metformin enhanced the ability of just wild-type mice to learn in that particular task over control mice. So we're really excited about this because what this gives us then is a very widely used safe human drug that recruits endogenous neural stem cells, at least in rodents, to promote the genesis of new neurons and gives us a chance to test the idea that if we could do that same thing in humans, we may be able to promote repair or recovery, at least in some situations.